You know, over the years, Casio have released many kinds of data banks. And this one, well, it kind of looks different. But how different is it? Hello Cassiopians and welcome to Digital Casio. Today we take a look at the DB33W. But before we do, I'd like to say a big thank you to you guys out there um, making this channel uh, up to 1,000 subscribers is a remarkable achievement and I appreciate all you guys for subscribing and watching these videos obviously if you are new to the channel come along and join the party and let's look at some more vintage digital Casio watches so the DB33W is a databank watch that was released in 1993 it carries the 871 module and is the same module you'll find in the more common DB31 However, the most striking feature about this is the appearance of those top buttons. They kind of make it look like a game. Now maybe that was the intention of the designers, uh, only in 1993, where it was kind of a big thing back then with the 8 16-bit systems uh, out there, the consoles and handheld games and such. So that could have been where the idea came from. But in all actuality, they're just like the regular top buttons that you get on the databank watches. The other interesting design feature is the right hand button that protrudes into the crystal. It gives that crystal a unique design. I like it. So let's take a look at the watch. So on the right hand side, you'll see that there's a adjust button which is inset. Um, and on the left side is a protruding button which is the mode button there. I'll just get this in focus, hang on. So this DB33W is a completely resin case with resin buttons and this ribbed kind of resin band which I believe is unique to this watch. I haven't seen one of these before. And in good Casio style we have the Casio brand right there on the buckle. So the resin band on this is another one of those that overlaps onto the stainless steel back which I really don't like because it means changing the battery is awkward. So the stainless steel back with four screws that hold it in place. The made in Korea sticker uh, denotes that it's actually new old stock. One of the few that I have. So we can actually do a LCD test on this watch by awkwardly pressing uh, all four buttons. All the buttons are pretty much located at the bottom of the watch there. But there you go. Any button will cancel that out. So we'll start by adjusting the time on this by pressing the adjust button down on the bottom right here. Uh, the, the seconds begin to flash and as usual you can press the right hand button to reset those seconds. If you pass 30 seconds it will reset the minute to the next minute. The left button uh, changes to the hour and of course you can use the top left top right buttons to adjust the times backwards and forwards. So setting the time is pretty much the same thing all the way through. It's a combination of pressing the left button and the top left top right buttons to adjust the time backwards and forwards. So we set it for 3.30 and we'll go on to the year. And you notice that this one starts at 1985. Uh, for a watch that was released in 1993, it seems kind of odd. But as I said before, that's because it uses the same module as the DB31, which was released in 1987. So the calendar year on this watch goes from 1985 through to 2029. So we'll set this for 2020. Um, May, uh, let's do uh, 25th. So being that it's an auto calendar watch, uh, um, when you press the adjust, the day of the week will come up. So we'll just press this adjust button. There we go. Okay, so it comes up as Monday. So beyond 2029, you might have difficulty getting the right day of the week. So the first function on this watch is the data bank or tele memo, which has a capacity of 30 records. 
And we'll put in our first record by hitting the adjust button here, which I seem to be having difficulty with. There we go. So the top part of the display is a dot matrix alphanumeric display. Uh, it can have up to eight characters. And once again, we can use the combination of the left button and the top left and right buttons to input your information. So the second part of the record in the lower half of the display, uh, you can input up to 12 digits in there with a combination of spaces and those dashes. And once we're done, we press the adjust button I'll never get this. There we go. Okay, so now that is stored in memory. And as I said before, you can scroll through your records using the top buttons. So the next function up is the alarm function. And with this, we have five alarms and an hourly signal. Now, while you're on that particular alarm or hourly signal, pressing the left button will turn it on and off. So as we go through, you can see that there are five alarms. Uh, each one can be uh, set to a specific date or it can be a daily alarm. So we'll press the adjust button to start setting this one. And again, we use the combination of left button and top left and right buttons. So we set this in place by pressing the adjust button. Uh, obviously with no date in there, it will chime this every, every day at the same time. So you notice there's a 20 second alarm and the little alarm icon flashes in the top left corner when it's uh, going off. So let's uh, adjust this to a particular day by pressing this awkward adjust button. So we'll just go through and adjust this again. So once you've passed the time, now you can input a date. And so we'll go ahead and put in today's date, which I think I put in as the 27th. Okay, and now we can put in a little memo in there just to say what the alarm is for. And when you put in your memo, you just press the adjust button to store that record. Go back to the time and, oh, okay. Uh, I've got to change it to the 25th, sorry. <laughs> Let's do that quick. 25th. So with the correct date set, the alarm should go off. So you can see there that the memo is actually displaying at the top there and the little icon is flashing. Again, that's obviously a 20 second alarm because it's the same alarm, but this time we activated the date. I don't, oh, there you go. 
So that display will stay there for the 20 second duration even though the alarm's not sounding. So that's the alarm functions. Um, we'll go on to the next one which is the dual time. So this is just your regular dual time. So we can go ahead and set that uh, by pressing the adjust button. <coughs> there we go. So on this, uh, we can actually adjust the time and the date on this. Um, the date is not actually set in there uh, as default from your, your regular timekeeping. So once you've put in your date and time, press the adjust button. And that's your dual time. Really not much to it. So the next function is the countdown timer. So here we see that it's set for one minute. Uh, we can press the adjust button. Uh, press the adjust button just the hours and the minutes. So as you can see, uh, you can set the timer for 24 hours. So let's set this back to one minute. Pressing the top left button will activate the repeat function. So I'll demonstrate that. Once we're set, we press the adjust button and start the timer by pressing the top right button. So the countdown timer alarm differentiates from the daily alarm is that it's four beeps repetitive over and over. And you notice that the timer has started counting down because of the repeat function. And that's a 10 second alarm on that. So the final function of the DB33W is of course uh, the customary stopwatch. Uh, using the top right button starts and stops and the top left resets. But the top left also acts as a split time, but only when the stopwatch is running. So we can activate that by pressing it and pressing it again. And that reverts back to your current time. Uh, with it pressed, you can actually press the stop button and then you can see the two times. So first one was 15.14 seconds, second one was 20.98 press it again to reset and that completes the functions of the DB33W so all in all it's a very capable watch unfortunately it does lack a backlight so this is how it looks on the wrist uh, you can see that it's actually a really good size for my 7 inch wrist um, and being the resin bands uh, that's why I particularly like resin band watches is that it's very comfortable and this one looks pretty sharp on the wrist too. Um, yeah, you yeah, have a square appearance like this and those odd shaped buttons. Yeah, I, I particularly like this watch, it's unique. So this one comes in at 24 grams, which is uh, particularly light, but it is resin, what do you expect? So that is the DB33W, uh, one of those uh, off the beaten track kind of databank watches. 
but still carries the same functions as your regular databanks. It is restricted by 30 records and like I say it carries the same modules as the DB31 and DB310. But it's it's a really nice watch. I really like it. Apart from that really awkward adjust button. I think it would have been better placed in the top left where your typical buttons are located. So I'll give this a 6 out of 10. So let's take a look at the specs here. Hello, hopefully you're still watching. Um, I'm gonna take a break from the norm and actually open this watch up. It's not something I normally do, It's, but I haven't been inside this watch before. So let's, uh, let's break this one open and see what's on the inside. So I already started uh, by removing the watch band. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, and now we'll take off the back using a small Phillips screwdriver on these four screws. So we'll carefully remove the back just in case anything's loose, uh, which there isn't. You can see the speaker is, looks like it toasted. Um, the module does have this plastic cover on there, it's an insulator and keeps things in place. So you can see that there's two springs here, there's one right next to the battery uh, with a little sticker around it, that's like an insulator sticker. Uh, remove this and see those springs clearer. I believe one of these will be for the speaker and one of them is for the open um, although I'm not entirely sure. So we'll try and carefully uh, pry the module out of the case. I like to do it at one end as opposed to the sides just in case you jam those buttons up or something. And there's the module. You can see there the, the two springs on the bottom there are for the top left and right buttons there. And as normal we have the surround, metal surround that's clipped in place. So inside the case you can see the uh, the insides of the buttons there, they are held on by C-clips. Uh, sometimes you get these watches and they're, they're like a, uh, a beveled kind of tip on them that holds them in place, which I really don't like because it makes changing out the buttons and cleaning them harder. <laughs> so I'm not actually going to disassemble the module. I mean, this was an, a NOS watch and I'd hate to get any dirt or anything inside that. But, Nevertheless, we'll check that the buttons are pushed out so that we can push the module into the back again. So with the module back in, uh, let's go ahead and uh, do an AC reset by touching your tweezers on the AC reset button there and on the battery just for a couple of seconds there. Turn it over just to make sure. I should point out that I didn't actually remove the rubber seal on there either. So we'll put the uh, insulator plastic back in and make sure that the hole fits over that bottom spring. Now we'll put the case back on the back of the watch, uh, making sure that you don't dislodge that rubber seal because you can actually damage it if it's hanging out a bit and you don't realize it.
When I put the backs on, I usually hold them down and do opposite corners. So tighten up one corner and then go to the opposite corner and tighten that up. We'll do a final check just to make sure that the watch is still running. And now the awkward part. These particular bands that hang over the back of the watch uh, can be uh, a little tricky. Uh, some of them are worse than others uh, because you have to hold it at a certain angle in order to get it right. Once you've got the angle right then you should be able to just push in the uh, retaining spring. And then we'll do the other side and we will be done. So I hope you liked this video um, and this demonstration of uh, taking the watch apart and putting it back together again. Uh, if you like this video subscribe, uh, hit that like button and share. Thank you for your support and we'll see you next time. Ta-ra!